when I did research in law and, and started figuring out citizenship and, and, and things of those nature, I found out basically that prophet is who we say he is, you know. Nationality is the order of the day. And if, from my perspective, if nationality wasn't important, then why was it taken away? Why did we need the prophet, uh, Noble Drali, to come on these shores and tell us that we were not Negro Black? Uh, yeah. You know? and, and me, with the prophet and the, and the flag, whatever the prophet told these people on these shores and retrieve that flag, and put us back in the bounds of righteousness with our nationality, made us put us back into the to the constitution of folders, put us back with our divine creed and our principles. All these things led me to believe that the prophet is who we say is, because who could have done that? I'm right. talking about who right. could have actually went to Europeans in old days and times and proved without a doubt a contradiction that hey man I am who I say I am and they give him this flag back right. so that that to me let me know the prophet is who we say he is the fact that the fact that that like like the sister said if it wasn't important why would they take it from us and it just always showed me just me personally the constitution when it was written you know our people our ancestors were in you know in bondage so for me it was like they couldn't have been talking to us and then when the prophet came and he said you are not this you are not that you are not three-fifths of a human being but a whole what was taken from you was your nationality and your divine creed so when he bought that back to us that's what let me know it's only a prophet could do that only an angel of Allah could do that for any of us for any of us. The same as Moses, what he did for my people, let my people go. The same went for us. Uh, I think, I mean, this is a, such an important question, right? Because what is the distinction between someone who is just a really good scholar or a really good political leader and someone who's a prophet? Mm -hmm. Right? Because we can talk about the greatness of Dr. Carter G. Woodson how people when learning their history are just awakened and, but we don't reference Woodson as a prophet or the same for Du Bois right or the same for Mary McLeod Bethune or, or anyone right what makes a prophet is that there is a spiritual or religious component to it and like you said bringing us our ancient and divine creed getting us to understand that we had a unique interpretation of if you will spirituality and that he defined as Islamism. But ironically for me, again, I didn't really accept in my heart the idea of being designated as a prophet at first because I'm thinking in terms of the biblical or Quranic tradition of, you know, the Quran al-Sharif or just the proverbial Holy Bible. You know, those men were prophets in the days of when miracles were happening, right? right. So you had that, or I had that, kind of um, understanding of what a prophet meant. But what changed my mind, when I started to say, wait a minute, no. There are spiritual things that are clearly moving and being shown to me in looking at what happened with the Moorish movement. You know, you essentially address some of, uh, some of those things. But the other thing was, <clears throat> when I started to study more closely the, the foundations of the old time religion. When the prophet said this is an old time religion, he didn't just say that this is Islam that begins with um, uh, the Arab prophet Muhammad and peace be upon him and all the prophets. He was saying that this had an earlier origin, the old time religion. So then references to Kemet or Egypt, references to, to India, ancient India. I'm going, okay, so this, is, this makes sense. He's saying it's the old time religion. And then to find out that even that's contained in the theology, you know, the, the religious history of Christianity, Judaism, and Al-Islam that, that are essentially uh, presented in a very um, uh, brief fashion with the Moorish Quran, meaning it's a you know, the pamphlet, as people often say. 
but it's still a sacred piece of literature that is directing us to look at everything I just said and to recognize that we're going beyond that point. But it's still submission to the will of God or the will of Allah, <clears throat> right? You're trying to get in line with that. And to make it even better for me, how much more simple can it be than to say, look, follow the five principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So you're already given an outline. Everything else, you know, is, is then, I can say, just uh, gravy. Well, with that, it was so crazy that you said it that way because even, you know, growing up in a Christian background and then you hear the story about Moses and Noah, they, they did the will of Allah. And they could own they didn't have a choice. They had to do the will of Allah. But then when you look at the at the you know, the the history of everything, they don't say that they were prophets. They don't say that they were prophets. So that in itself solidified Noble Drew Ali for me because I know that they didn't tell us all the truth because I'm looking at these great men and what they did for their people because again Moses saved his people. Mm -hmm. And then again, Noah built that ark to save the people. So that's what a prophet does. Save the people, that's right. Right, that's and right. that's what Drew Ali did. It's just like when the prophet came on the scene and we discussed the nationality. Man, I had to get to the spiritual point because the nationality had took so, had I had took it on so strong to I wasn't looking at the spiritual part. So when you're dealing with the prophet, that's how, when we talk about how we know he's a prophet, when he can take you and make you a spiritual being at the same time, make you whole again. So dealing with the Quran, when you study in that Quran, that Quran is going to do something to you. At the same time, your nationality do something for you. And a lot of people don't actually know what they nationality or they spirituality do because they not taught that. But this is what the prophet do. He teaches you that. So like when we're speaking about Christianity, Christianity, not to never bash Christianity, I wasn't taught that. I was just told a lot of things. Right. But in, in, in more science and what the prophet did, he teaches you these things. He teaches you your nationality and your divine creed that's what I love about the prophet. What the prophet did for me spiritually, and I knew he was a prophet, was when I started changing my character and finding out what a Moorish American is and how a Moorish American is supposed to be. Um, our, our headdress, uh, we wear fezzes, we wear turbans, and putting on a headdress and putting on the fez and seeing how people react to me, that kind of changed me because I have a lot of um, testimonies but I won't go into but that that changed me what what did it do for you well my background is the I came out of the Pentecostal church so in having that experience and then coming and learning the truth about myself and the truth about um, my nationality and divine creed it was really an eye-opener because <clears throat> During my um, time in the church, and like Russell Bay said, not to bash the church because it's where um, a lot of my development, my character development came from, um, but I just felt that there was a piece missing. And so when I uh, learned of the prophet, I was just really excited about what you know I had read about him and coming into the temple and having that knowledge just kind of broken open to me. It was very um, enlightening and, and just it was the piece that I needed to kind of put everything together.